one way of thinking about these two um, aspects is uh, the, the idea of the model uh, and the architectural model, but it doesn't have to be an architectural model, it can be different kinds of model. Um, and the nature of a model is to um, be both uh, structural in the way it carries ideas. Uh, so for instance, a model uh, can be representative, it can be experimental, it can project into the future a kind of a conceptual or utopian way of thinking. Um, it has these different status. Um, but at the same time, the nature of the model is to be flexible, it is to be makeshift, light, uh, informal. So, so there are these different qualities that manage to hold uh, um, these two aspects together. And uh, it's to do with, um, in a sense, a tone of presentation uh, and uh, um, that one is putting forward ideas in a, a playful or an experimental way um, that is flexible, that remains flexible, but can also be quite precise. It's perhaps the hardest thing to talk about, um, uh, the the nature of the poetic, and uh, it's almost perhaps important not to talk about it, um, because when you start naming it, uh, it becomes too um, present. Um, and what I'm interested in is how, um, uh, in, a, in a sense, the limit of an artwork, or the way that an artwork works differently to the way um, other forms uh, other art forms or literary forms work. Um, uh, and uh, in, in that sense, um, uh, there are, depending on the works, there are different references in each work. Um, and very often the, uh, the work fails to carry uh, the literary ideas or references within the work. And that uh, failure or, or to carry or hold information is part of my interest in, in the work. This work in the show is um, part of a, 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 a project that I've been uh, working on for a while. Um, and it's to do with uh, uh, Konstantin Melnikov, who's a Russian architect who was operating mainly in the 1920s. And, uh, he, uh, his first commission actually was to build the, to design the sarcophagus of Lenin's tomb, Lenin's mausoleum. Um, and uh, so his first uh, work was, uh, in a sense, a death work. Um, and uh, after that, he, he designed all, uh, many um, uh, uh, progressive uh, buildings throughout the 1920s. Um, but he never fitted into the more materialist, um, revolutionary, constructivist movements. He, he, was, he was more esoteric. And uh, he, uh, um, he built, towards the end of the, that decade, about 1929, he built himself a house called Cylindrical House Studio uh, in, the, in the middle of Moscow. And uh, this house... Uh, comprised of two interlocking cylinders uh, that where his living spaces and working spaces and sleeping spaces are, are conjoined, um, uh, uh, interlocking. Um, and it, it was, it's almost as a motif, it's a way of uh, building, dwelling and thinking, uh, how these uh, different notions uh, coexist. Um, and uh, but when he built this house, very soon afterwards, he was shut down as an architect. He wasn't able to practice anymore because of the, in a sense, the Stalinist um, uh, censorship to, took hold in the 1930s and he fell out with the regime and wasn't able to practice. And uh, so he remained in that house until 1972 when he died. Um, so it's so interesting that this house that became, which was designed as the perfect living working space, became this kind of almost uh, his living tomb, professional tomb, um, where he was unable to operate any, any longer. And so then what does this building become? 
and what, what did he do in this building? It becomes a, an extraordinary hermetic space and he turns to painting and uh, he ends up painting portraits, still lives. Um, uh, and it's, it's inter I was interested in this um, uh, motif of Melnikov's as a, as a way of thinking about painting and the difficulty of painting and also painting's death. Um, in, a, in a sense, you know, he's a contemporary of Malevich and um, Malevich was maybe early on bringing painting to a conclusion or to an end point with his black square and then uh, people like Nikolai Tarabukin sort of declared painting absolutely redundant um, uh, and uh, telling all painters to go into the factories and, and uh, engage in society in a more politically constructive way than painting. Um, so in a way um, this relationship to um, a kind of a, the, a death of a, of a of a, of a practice as an architect, which is very much a practice in the world. It's to do with a kind of like a social political um, activity that's more direct than painting. And yet he then turns to the most hermetic of activities um, and in a sense paints through his death. Um, and uh, so as a, as a motif of thinking about painting, thinking about the monochrome, thinking about different um, uh, gestures of painting now and what is possible now, I, I, I found it uh, an interesting subject. Um, and so there's two works in that show. There's, there's a sort of a, a work that comprises of different painting motifs and then there's a, there's a mat, a floor mat uh, on, on the ground that's poked, uh, that's placed slightly outside the space, in, in, in between space. Um, and again, it's a kind of, it could be a motif for painting, it could be a, um, a monochrome, um, it, but it's obviously also a ready-made, it's a, it's a rubber mat. Um, and uh, I was uh, reading a text by Thierry de Duve, um, who was relating uh, Malevich's Black Square to Duchamp's uh, ready-made, and, and uh, as being, you know, a, a painting that is a ready-made. And it's in, in this sense, it's something to uh, walk through, uh, perhaps to step on, uh, and, uh, but yet still exists as a, as a motif for painting.